Over 100 years ago, a young man by the name of George Herman Ruth was pitching for the Boston Red Sox. An outstanding young player, the man nicknamed Babe was considered an elite thrower who can occasionally hit bombs not seen by any other player in the MLB's dead ball era. At this time, Babe was only pitching, but doing so at an excellent clip. A young Bambino led the American League in 1916 with a 1.75 ERA, winning 23 games with 170 strikeouts. With a career ERA of 2.28, he still has the 15th highest ERA for any player in history. Yet, Ruth always had dreams of being an everyday player as an outfielder. It took a couple of seasons before his dream became a reality, and in 1919, Babe had his first crack at hitting regularly, as well as pitching. He did pretty lackluster as a pitcher compared to his best days, but he began to thrive as a hitter. In 130 games at the plate, he dominated the majors, leading the season in runs, homers, RBIs, OBP, slugging, and OPS. This season changed the course of the MLB forever, as well as Babe's career trajectory as a two-way superstar. The next season, as a New York Yankee, he fully transitioned into becoming a slugger. The Sultan of Swat would go on to become one of the greatest hitters in baseball history, but he would never pitch regularly again. Since the great Bambino, the game hasn't seen a player who could pitch and hit like him. Fast forward a whole century, and there was a new dual threat force emerging from the Japanese baseball scene. His name? Shohei Otani. Otani's rise to baseball stardom was not a shock by any means. As a free agent in 2018, he had virtually every team chomping at the bit to sign the phenom. He was the biggest name to come out of Japan since Ichiro Suzuki, with the add-on of being a potentially elite two-way player. And the hype surrounding him wasn't unwarranted. He was a highly touted high school prospect who could throw 99 miles per hour before he turned 18. Otani seriously considered going straight from high school to the MLB, but he decided to stay in Japan and play pro ball there first. During his tenure in the Nippon Professional Baseball League with the Hokkaido Nippon Ham Fighters, awesome name by the way, Shohei lit up the league. He immediately showcased his two-way potential as a left-handed batter and a right-handed hurler. As an 18-year-old rookie, Otani made the All-Star team in 2013, and he set a few MVP records as a two-way draftee straight out of high school. He would steadily improve his play over the following seasons, and emerge as one of the best pitchers in the league. His batting lines were still a work in progress, but he was able to up his home run and RBI totals year after year. His incremental development culminated in a league MVP in 2016, as well as a Japan Series championship. That year, Otani slugged 22 homers and 67 RBIs at a 322 average with an OPS just over 1,000. It was this year that officially turned Shohei from a fringe MLB prospect to the most coveted international free agent in some time. Otani finished his Japanese career with a 42-15 pitching record a 2.52 ERA and 624 strikeouts, as well as a 286 batting average, 48 homers, and 166 RBIs. These are very respectable numbers if you isolate just his pitching and just his hitting, but it was the fact that he could do both that made MLB teams salivate at his potential. So after getting a posting agreement to become an international free agent in 2017, a now 23-year-old Shohei had his choice of whatever team to sign for in 2018. The Los Angeles Angels won the sweepstakes and signed Otani to a league minimum contract. It was an absolute steal for the Angels because had Shohei waited until he was 25 to join the MLB, he could have gotten a free agent deal north of $200 million. But Otani wanted to bet on himself. So instead of waiting two more years, he joined the Angels right away. In Otani's rookie year, he would go on to prove just how underpaid he was by immediately producing tangible results. In his first home stand with the Angels, Shohei hit home runs in back-to-back -back games and tied the franchise record with 12 total bases and 5 RBIs through his first three games. In his first pitching appearance, Otani went 6, struck out 6 while allowing 3 runs to pick up his first MLB win. However, as fun as his burst onto the scene was, injuries began to become a concern for the young star. In his third pitching start, Otani had to exit the game due to a blister on his hand. Then, a couple months into the season, he was diagnosed with a grade 2 UCL sprain in his right throwing elbow. This was something he dealt with before the season had started, and in both instances he treated the issue with a plasma injection. Shohei was able to finish the season, albeit with a limited number of starts and plate appearances. Even though he missed games due to rehab, Otani still had a very good first season in the MLB. 
Offensively, in 104 games, he hit 285 with 22 homers and 61 RBIs, with a slugging percentage of 564, good for an OPS of 925. He also stole 10 bases and was clocked at reaching first base in 3.7 seconds, demonstrating yet another valuable tool for the young star. As a pitcher, he started 10 games through 63 strikeouts for an ERA of 3.31 and a whip of 1.16. The combined hitting and pitching stats gave Otani a total war of 3.8, good for 61st in the league in 2018. Pretty good for a rookie. And this was without any fielding contributions, which is usually a big part of the war calculation. Shohei quickly put away all doubts of his ability to adjust to major league pitching and hitting in just his first year. It was a very tight rookie of the year race between Otani and Yankees infielder Miguel Andujar with many Miggy supporters pointing out that he played more games and produced more as a hitter and fielder. However, Otani's capacity to provide two distinct ways to contribute on the field is simply what won him the award. And Duhar had a total war 2.8 to Otani's 3.8, showing just how much more valuable Shohei can be compared to a player that plays just one position. Although he had a great first year, his season ended on a sad note, as in September it was announced that Otani had to undergo Tommy John surgery. The procedure would keep Shohei off the mound until 2020 and would make him just a one-way player for the first time in his professional playing career. Regardless of the bad news, Otani's rookie year helped lay the groundwork for one of the most unique careers in baseball's long and storied history. We would just have to wait one more year to enjoy the two-way electric play again. With the burden of pitching off his shoulders, Otani was able to focus on just hitting. In the 2019 season, he posted similar hitting numbers with a near identical amount of games played, batting average, homers, RBIs, and steals. It was slightly concerning to see a slugging go down by 0.6%, but he proved that he could put out comparable numbers two years in a row and that his rookie stats weren't just a fluke. Even in his stagnant years, Showtime still managed to make history. On June 13th, he hit for the cycle, becoming the first Japanese player to do so. This game showed that he wasn't just a power hitter, but a batter that could spray the ball all across a diamond. It was a great moment in the young career of Shohei, as he did something that not even the best Japanese players of all time did. This was one of the first games where people really started to respect Otani as one of the best pure hitters in the league, and not just some sort of spectacle. Yet once again, his season ended prematurely due to a nagging knee injury that required surgery. The injuries were really concerning and people were starting to wonder whether or not it was a good idea to have a two-way player in the modern game, and whether Otani would have to eventually choose between being a full-time hitter or a full-time pitcher. 2020 would hold all the answers if Shohei could just get through a full 162 game season. However, just like the fact that the MLB had its first two-way superstar in 100 years, the world had its first global pandemic in a century. I guess time really is a flat circle. COVID-19 plus a vitriolic player-owner dispute caused the MLB to only have a 60-game season. An ongoing pandemic and a shortened baseball season was a double whammy of sadness for fans. On the bright side, at least Otani was cleared to pitch again. Well, that bright side quickly faded to darkness. His first start ended after surrendering five earned runs without recording a single out, giving him an infinite ERA to start the season. In his second start, Shohei began to experience discomfort in his right arm, and an MRI revealed a flexor strain in the same right throwing elbow. Otani was once again shut down from pitching for the rest of the season. He couldn't even make up for it on the hitting side, finishing with a batting line of 190, 291, and 366, with 7 homers, 24 RBIs, and 7 steals in 43 games. It was a very disappointing year on many accounts, but again, it was only 60 games. Who knows, maybe if he had an extra 100 games to hit, those numbers wouldn't have looked so terrible. For many big leaguers, the small sample size of a season was a throwaway for making any meaningful judgments. For Otani, the bigger concern was the injuries. So heading into this season, there is cautious optimism about what Shohei would look like and whether he would be able to pitch at a high level like he did his rookie year. Otani put in the work in the offseason. He got swole, partly to last the whole 162 game season, and partly to fulfill his destiny of becoming a model, and he ramped himself up to being a two-way player once more. In his first start of the season, Otani fully delivered on his one-of-a-kind play as he threw four and two-thirds innings, allowing one earned run, striking out seven, and batted second, going one for three, including a mammoth 450-foot solo shot on the first pitch he faced. 
Shohei became the first player to start a game and hit second in the lineup, as well as hit a homer in his start since Babe Ruth. This tremendous one-game dual-threat display was the type of performance baseball fans were clamoring for when Otani entered the league. He put the MLB on notice that he's still a top-level talent and that when healthy, he can be the game's most exciting player. And this game wasn't just a one-off performance. More than two months into the season, Otani has been on a torrid pace both behind the plate and on the rubber. Shohei is tied for 5th in the MLB with 16 home runs, tied for 8th with 42 RBIs, and tied for 9th with 9 stolen bases. At one point, Otani led the league in home runs as a pitcher for the first time in 100 years. You can guess which player did it last. It seems that Otani is finally becoming the Babe Ruth reincarnation he was destined to be. While his hitting has been spectacular, his pitching has been just as good. Through 8 starts, Shohei has a 2.76 ERA, along with 60 strikeouts and a whip of 1.16. He has just as many Ks and 15 fewer hits given up and 9 fewer innings compared to his 2018 campaign. The talking point for Otani has gone from him being an enthralling injury playing novelty to him being the potential MVP of the AL. There's no real argument against this, especially if he plays a full season. Nobody else in the game can provide the level of value that he can, and right now he is actually the odds-on favorite to win the MVP. The Shohei Kid is the most unique player in MLB history. As a pitcher, he can hit 100 miles per hour with ease, and has a devastating slider and split finger to boot. Although walks have been his biggest weakness as a pitcher so far, his strikeout ability is up there with any ace in the game. As a hitter, he is a fluid lefty that can hit any pitch in any location of the strike zone. It doesn't matter if the ball is at the letters or at his knees. Otani can launch it out of the park. Shohei is exactly the type of superstar that MLB has been craving, and is a perfect ambassador for the game of baseball. He came along at the perfect time, one in which the game itself is changing stylistically. Players like Fernando Tatis, Ronald Acuna, and Juan Soto are leading this charge, and it will undoubtedly help bring in a new, younger audience into the game. But unlike those guys, Shohei is doing things that no other player can. The saying goes that history tends to repeat itself. For baseball, it took 100 years for there to be another Babe Ruth. But history is in fact repeating, and the wait is totally worth it. To be able to see Otani do what he does on a daily basis is something that baseball fans never thought they'd ever see in their lifetimes. So I think it's time we start truly appreciating Shohei and his historical two-way play for what it is. An anomaly that might not be replicated for another century.